Alright. <clears throat> First and foremost, man, you know, my bad. It's been a while. What can I say? I'm a reader of books. And these motherfuckers take a little while to get through, man. I ain't gonna stunt. Especially because, you know what I mean, we study and we research this, right? We ain't, we ain't lames. We ain't new to this. You feel me? I'm not the student. I'm the wizard. So that being said, let's talk about it. The Science of Love by Dr. John Baines. Man, we got to throw in some mind control. This new age pimping, this pimping, make no mistake about it, man. This pimping, it ain't a game. Science of Love. I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. And I know what the fuck mind control is, too. How to influence others without them knowing or caring. How to influence the thoughts and actions of others without them knowing or caring. When you understand that this is 98% of what 98% of people are doing, then this is fairly easy to fucking understand. Period. So, we get these two books, because we pimping. We ain't playing. Don't let nobody fool you. This pimping. Life is pimping. You need to eat. You need money. You need whatever the fuck you need. Mind control. Science of love. So, let's talk about it, man. Before we can talk about love, let's just get straight to one of these little clips. Mind control. Mm, mm, mm. Hold on. You know, somewhere, I want to say in the beginning of this book, do, 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 do. what is mind control? And yeah, I got it. I knew it was in the beginning. I got it highlighted. You feel me? Mind control. For the sake of this book, but it's a hell of a definition. But for the sake of this book, any attempt to bring about a change in your thoughts and feelings, and therefore your actions, is an act of mind control. Any attempt to bring a change in your thoughts and feelings, any attempt to bring about a change in your thoughts and feelings, and therefore your actions, your thoughts and feelings, and therefore your actions, is mind control. An act of mind control. And you know what? Let's go a little bit deeper. That's an act of mind control. Tab number one, we come straight to behavioral modification. Behavioral modification is nothing, than a, nothing more than a series of rewards and punishments for behavior. For certain behaviors good or bad, but a series of rewards and punishments for behavior. That's called behavioral modification. Behavioral conditioning, rather, is the process of making the modified change a self-rewarding, self-justifying habit. So how does that pertain to love? Self-rewarding, self-justifying habit. So basically, you make them feel love. By them doing something for you, they feel like, you know, they get good, mushy feelings out of it. They think it's love. But it's really mind control for you because this is pimping. And again, man, you know, I try not to be too harsh because real talk, I don't want y'all to get pimped. I'm not saying I'm running around here getting everybody out of their dollars and I'm trying to pimp you on YouTube or trying to pimp anybody. I'm just saying... I know it's pimping. So you can't pimp me. You might pimp some of these other motherfuckers, but you ain't pimping me and my kids or my people. Anybody that fuck with me, know me, we ain't getting pimped. They can ask me some questions, and it is what it is, because we know what the fuck is going on on the dark side, in the background. So anyways, I digress. The process of making the modified change a self-rewarding, self-justifying habit. Behavioral conditioning is a fine balance 
of reward and punishment. Now I can stop right there and we just go straight into the language of love. I mean the science of love. Boom. A random reward schedule gets a better response than a reward schedule that consistently gives a reward for every right action. Love. A random reward. So a random gift every now and then will get you more success than every time you do something right, you give them a good gift, you give them a reward or whatever. And this is mind control. If you wasn't trying to mind control somebody, then every time they do right, you give them, you know what I'm saying, what they do. Every time they did what they're supposed to do, you take care of that shit. You will reward them. But we all know that ain't how life works. Rewarding small behaviors is easier than, re than rewarding complete change. Rewarding small behaviors is easier than rewarding complete change. So I'm going to stop right there because I ain't trying to mind control you niggas. I'm just trying to show you that's mind control 101. So all of that is in a section of parts. You know what I'm talking about? I skipped quite a nice little chunk to get to the behavior of whole, that whole thing. I skipped a nice little chunk. Basically all the beginning shit and introduction and whatever else. We know mind control is real. We understand it's happening everywhere from advertising to logos to colors. Everything. Is my control. We get it. We ain't stupid. So anyways, let's press forward. The science of love. To understand what love is, this book actually starts off talking about what love is not. Um, I believe if there's enough time, I might can touch on damn near every fucking chapter in this book. But there's quite a lot of chapters of what love is not. See that first, damn near the whole, yeah, the whole goddamn first page. Full of chapter. Corrupt love is this. Corrupt love is that. Corrupt love is this. Corrupt love is that. You know what? I got my tabs here, so we'll do that. But let's just go down the list. Elements of corrupt love. Starts off with a prologue, introduction, all of that shit, right? This is also, um, if you're into hermetics, I believe it says hermit, hermit hermeticism. Hermeticism, Hermes, Trismegistus, uh, all of that shit. You know what I mean? What was that book? The Cabalion. This is the guy who's into that type of shit. You feel me? The Cabalion. If you understand anything about anything, you already see that triangle point. Man, you know what's up. You get it. But anyways, Hermetic. So this guy is is into that whole Hermes, Trismegistus, the Cabalion. Her, hermeticism. Hermeticism. I got another book here. It's actually called uh, Wisdom of the Mystic Masters. Good ass book. You can drop and get that. But this is a Rosicrucian book that I found on Amazon. Super dumb cheap. Rosicrucian. If you know a little something about that, you know a little something about that. If not, you might want to look it up. But we ain't going to get into all that. Point being love. So, do take, say, a uh, hermeticistic point of view. Hermes, Cabalion, that whole, whole, whole thing, right? He takes that type of uh, approach to love, which is also why we see it as science, you know, because, again, them niggas is more or less agnostic, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, God, it's about knowledge and knowing. How about that? It's about knowing. It's about a knowing. So, anyways, let's keep it cracking. Why do people get married? After the uh, elements of corrupt love, the following chapters, why do people get married? Why the fuck do people get married? Obviously, it's a social thing. You don't see anywhere else in nature animals giving rings and other tokens of this and whatever. Well, I think there is something like the penguins and they got like that pebble or whatever. And some animals do mate for life. I get that. But that ain't necessarily married. You see what I'm saying? So, why do people get married? Corrupt love is ignorance. 
ignorance. You know what I'm saying? It's just it, it, it's straight up ignorance. You really don't know what love is. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt love is ignorance. These are niggas that are they looking for love because they don't know what love is. Always be aware of motherfuckers looking for love because they think they they don't take the love that you give. You feel me? They don't understand real love, true love, is self love. You feel me? And giving of the love. You have so much love for yourself that you can give love and spread love and show love to other people. You see what I'm saying? But if you don't love yourself, anyways, anyways, you get it. It's ignorance. Motherfuckers that don't know what love is. Love is not on the TV show, you feel me? It's not on a motherfucking movie. They don't know what the fuck love is. Fuck out of here. Corrupt love is using marriage as an anchor and go. See, it's got its own motherfucking chapter. That's why I didn't really even talk about why do people get married. It's a social construct because you live in a third world country or in a western society with that type of mentality of we got to get married, we're supposed to get married. It's a social thing, a government. Govern you, 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 you get it. Anyways, we ain't rookies here, right? Uh, corrupt love is withholding oneself. Now, I don't know if I got that. That's the one I got. Oh, yeah, I got that chapter. Boom. Because that's a huge one. We all know what withholding oneself is. Niggas with commitment problems, commitment issues, and whatever else. Man. We already know that shit. We get it. We get it. We get it. So, another long-standing pattern based on a materialistic outlook which causes men and women not to give themselves deeply in love relationships while demanding at the same time unconditional giving from the other person. Once again, withholding itself. In love, there is another long-standing pattern based on a materialistic outlook which causes men and women to not give themselves deeply in love relationships while demanding at the same time unconditional giving from the other person. This can lead a woman to an awareness of her own economic value, which is invariably proportional to her physical attributes as a female. The man who's the main player in this game, who, who you know, even though we're talking about a woman or whatever, we understand men are the reason why Women even fucking do this shit. Retarded ass niggas. But anyways. Uh, <coughs> the men. <laughs> who is the main player in this game. Knows that he has a high. Has to pay a high price for this woman. Whether it is to keep her forever. Or to satisfy all her whims. When a woman is portrayed as an object. It stems from the fact that she is in some way. An object of commercial value. On one hand, she is aware of her value, and on the other, a man knows that he has to pay a price to obtain and keep her, thus giving rise to a commercial transaction. This situation is another factor which encourages and maintains love without love. So, of course, we already know this shit. I mean, withholding itself, that should be self damn explanatory but... I had to really lay that out, especially so you get an understanding of how, how freaking dope this book is. Because a lot of niggas don't even really catch that point. But that's what it is. If you have to have a car, if you have to have a job, if you have to have anything for her to like you, for her to love you, then she's withholding herself until you get right, until you good, until you go take a shower, man. I've been listening to some of these songs. Man, I'm just saying, man. You get my point, man. <laughs> you can't be a dirty nigga. And, and she fall in love with you. Or white boy, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. You know what I'm saying? We all niggas. I, don't, I see nothing but niggas. Black niggas, white niggas, yellow niggas, Chinese niggas. All you niggas is niggas to me. So anyways, I digress. There may be a wide difference between the value which a person sets upon himself or herself and the value that the other party sets. So off the dribble, my niggas. And you see, I ain't really highlight nothing else after that first motherfucking page because the whole goddamn chapter, well, the chapters kind of blow through pretty fast. So, you know what I'm saying? See, it's just a couple pages and then boom, we already own the corrupt love is narcissism and jealousy. But that one had to be noticed and whatnot because it's in the motherfucking book. So for some of you niggas, if, if it's just as simple as, look, bitch, argue with yourself or argue with Dr. John motherfucking Baines. Don't argue with me. 
The shit you doing is corrupt. That's just what it is. She ain't gonna love you till we get married or you agree to get married or whatever the fuck it is. She's withholding herself. Or even the nigga. The, the, the female, the lady, the bitch gotta have this. She gotta have that. She gotta be about her money. She gotta any stipulations you put on it. That you're not giving her all of yourself. You're not giving yourself deeply. Maybe not all, but you're not really giving yourself deeply. Really being in love. Then my nigga, use a bitch. And that's some old punk ass shit. Withholding yourself. I'm sorry. My bad. Whoever this is that we talking about. Because obviously, my people ain't like that. You feel me? If you didn't like this, subscribe. I ain't talking to you. Any of you other bitch ass niggas. I'm talking to you. That's what that is. So you can argue with yourself. That's why that whole motherfucking chapter was there. And again, narcissism and jealousy. You think so highly of yourself that you will withhold yourself. I mean, hello, narcissism and jealousy. Or the other person got what you ain't got. So you really jealous. And this is what it is. Now, we create a lot of thought forms. A lot of, of, of our own demons. We trap ourselves in our own boxes. You feel me? Because we the ones that come up with these thoughts. And not to say it like that. I guess what I'm really trying to get out here is uh, more so when you... Or just as, as you're growing up and you get afraid of certain things and you find certain things that you're, you know, that, that initial fear comes in and, and whatever else, you know what I'm saying? When that happens and whatnot, you, you create a shadow form or you create, yeah, yeah, basically a shadow of yourself. You create a, a, a part of you that ain't afraid of that shit, that ain't scared of that shit or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And that's basically a double of yourself, like a shadow of yourself. Now, a lot of us have so many things that we are secretly afraid of, especially all them big, bad, tough niggas, and you know they're really soft on the inside. They done built up this whole tough man ego and whatnot to protect that soft-ass nigga on the inside, right? We all know that. We all get that. Part of that is narcissism and jealousy. So anyways, again, man, it, it, to me it wasn't really a whole lot to really go through all this or whatever, you know what I'm saying? The jealous person is a total exclusivist who imagines the loved one to be an object without liberty or a life of his or her own. It's just that simple. Narcissism. You mind. Jealousy. You can't do shit without I'm saying you can do it. Or whatever. Now, it's pretty much, it's just a lot thicker than that last chapter. Oh, they put a lot of pages on the goddamn <laughs> narcissist and whatnot. I probably should have went a little deeper into that. Or maybe I'm squeezing them together. Yeah, I think I was squeezing them together. That's my fault. Because the next chapter is Corrupt Love is the Amorous Human Automatron. Now, if you notice, man, these chapters are kind of bleeding into each other, which is why this book is really motherfucking cool. Because if you understand the one chapter, then you can move forward and progress to the next chapter. And, again, this is just for those who ain't advanced, so to speak. Some of us can just read straight through this motherfucking book and get it, got it, good, that's what's up. That's why it's such a hard book. And again, it touches on the hermetic, hermeticism, the hermetic side of things. You know what I mean? I'm really just going to talk about, because this is the dark side. So really just going to talk about what the corrupt love part of it is. You can get the book and figure out what true love is. If you're on this path anyway, then you're meditating and you're doing what you got to do to figure out what true love is. So we ain't even going to really get in all that. There's so much shit about what real love is and whatever else. So. This is just a good ass book to try to help some of y'all wrap your head around this shit. Uh, let's pass forward. The Amorous Human Automatron. The Human Automatron. These niggas are just robots. The only thing you see is the other person in the relationship. That's what the fuck a robot is. She says do it and you do it. He says do it and you do it. They say go. You say where do you want me to go sir? Alright, enough of that bullshit. Matter of fact, I need to hit my blunt. No, no, nigga, where the drink at? Man, I had to put a sock, put a motherfucking straw in the drink just so I could sip while I'm talking to you, niggas. Let's see if I can get it in a year, nigga. Alright. Put the drink down. And yes, that motherfucker is spiked. So, that being said, let's see if we can get this right too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, nigga, we getting good at this. The human automatron. Again, I didn't even highlight anything for real, for real on this chapter two. Just for that same point. Like I said, they kind of bleed into each other. So when we talk about the human automatron, we're basically, yeah, you know, the narcissist and the jealous person treats the person like it's an object. You're just a thing to admire me and adore me or whatever. Or because I'm so jealous of you, I want you for everything that you got, but they'll eventually strip you down to nothing. Because you're just a plaything. You're just an object. And when you have nothing and there's nothing else that they want from you, they get rid of you. They discard you. That's narcissism and jealousy. Motherfuckers can be jealous of you and act like they love you because they just don't really know what love is. You got love for yourself. Gold diggers and soul diggers, but we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So that's the human automatron. A lot of these motherfuckers play victim or they don't really know what's going on because they've been beaten down so long, whatever else. That, that's what ends up happening. They basically just become a human robot. A motherfucking love slave. A boy toy. You know what I'm saying? That eye candy. That's all it is. You know what I mean? The, the, the trophy wife. You know, that's what that is. Again, that's why I say this is pimping. Because you can clearly see that this is pimping. These niggas is playing with y'all. Don't let them play with you. Get this book. So, man, let's keep going. Matter of fact, I'm going to skip straight to my next chapter uh, on my tab here, which is Corrupt Love is Vampirism. Just said that shit, right? So you got gold diggers, you feel me? And I heard a nigga say something about soul diggers, so I stole it. I don't know who the fuck it is. It was probably some shit I watched on YouTube. I don't give a holy fuck at all. It was a good-ass word. It was a good-ass term. Whoever you are, give your props. I'm using it, nigga. So vampirism. People possess a magnetic force which Mesmer called animal magnetism. Mesmer is the guy they termed the whole phrase mesmerized from. I, I can't remember his first name, but Mesmer, right? Is his last name. M-E-S-M-E-R. Google it. So anyways, people possess a magnetic force which has been called animal magnetism, an energy which the human being constantly projects and absorbs. It occurs upon establishing communication with a specific individual or simply being in their physical presence. So when you come around and a nigga get happy, that's your body, your physical presence giving off energy. There you go. I remember reading on a nigga's birthday. Um, I got this book, The Secret Language of Birthdays. And it said on somebody's birthday, your physical, emotional, or psychological presence can be used, it can be found imposing or intimidating, or can come across in an imposing or intimidating way. So I was like, damn nigga, just you talking means people might feel, in, you know, might feel like you imposing or you're intimidating them just by you talking. Um, just by you being in the room, people feel like you're intimidating them or you're imposing them. And just the way you think, people feel like you're intimidating them, you're imposing them, you feel me? There you go, the way you feel, the way you think, and this is your presence, just you being there. Your physical presence, nigga, makes people feel some kind of way. And this is everybody born on your birthday, secret language of birthday. So anyways, I digress. Point being, it occurs by simply being around, man. People can leech off your energy. If they getting hype, if they get excited, ah, oh, shit, here come my nigga, man, we can... There you go. Because even though we're talking about love, man, there are so many different f forms of love, like brotherly love. You see what I'm saying? Friendship. That's what the fuck is, is also up in here, too, man. You know, I learned a whole lot of shit reading this book. Even, like, why I don't fuck with some of the friends and family that I used to fuck with way back in the day. You know, you grow up with and whatever else. Science of love. Because that wasn't love, whether it was on their part or it was on my part. We was basically, a lot of us, we was just out here on some vampire shit. Real talk. You wanted to have some fun, so you go hit up your partners or your friends or whatever. Corrupt love is vampirism. That wasn't really love, man. We was just doing what we had to do to get through what we had to get through. A.K.A. That's childhood, nigga. When we grow the fuck up, that's when real love comes into play. Are you doing this 
out of force? Or are you doing this because one of these corrupt ass reasons? So anyways, man, we just going to keep going. I'm going to try to stick to it again. I wasn't trying to spend a whole lot of time. Vampirism has always been associated with the drinking of another's blood, but really what people don't realize is this vital essence of this precious fluid, precious fluid is the magnetism accumulated in the iron which the blood contains and is which projected through the spleen. Yeah, nigga. Vampires are real. And it's niggas like you, me, the kids, all them niggas. Your mom, everybody. Everybody out there, man. It's real. You can't help it. It's what you do anyway. It's in your blood. So, that's what we talking about anyway. In a sense, no difference exists between eating chicken and devouring a person. The chicken is physically ingested while the person is psychologically consumed. And they seldom realize it. One cannot assume, yeah, and, and they seldom realize it. The most obvious thing is the victim's behavior. He or she becomes a lifeless entity devoid of any personality. Kind of back to the whole robot thing. Right? Back to the whole robot thing. So now we fast forward. So if them niggas is robots, these niggas is vampires. See what I'm saying? That's how you end up a robot. Because they eat everything up off of you. You lose all your friends. You lose all your family members. Now you ain't got shit. You ain't nobody. You don't play video games anymore. You don't do shit. You don't do shit. That ain't love. That's a motherfucking vampire. You feel me? I don't know what you niggas might be going through. I have all kind of fun, nigga. You see me, I'm having fun now. <laughs> Sip the drink, nigga. Right back. Oh, let me get this shit. Get this shit, nigga. Yeah, nigga. The vampire sincerely believes that he intensely loves his partner because when he is separated from her, he feels real sadness and a void which he finds difficult to feel. They really think they love you, nigga. They just love how you make them feel. Scratch my eye, nigga. <laughs> They love how you make them feel. And when you leave, they get sad. When you, you know what I'm saying? When you walk out the door, this is why they always tripping. Where you at? What you doing? Man, this motherfucker. That's vampire shit, man. Let that motherfucker go. Again, true love. If you're free, you have no rules, no obligations, nothing. You're free. Whatever you do, I'm cool with. Because that's who you are. It's what you wanted to do. You feel me? If we become one, just saying, if you are an extension of me and I'm an extension of you, then if you want to do it, I want you to do it. If you're going to enjoy it, then by all means, go have fun. Enjoy yourself. That's what this life is about. That's love. I don't want you to be pissed or regret not doing what you want to do. Do it. Anyways, I'm not a vampire, though. I'm a motherfucking vampire. <laughs> I'm all this shit. Because, again, life is pimping. I ain't stupid. You feel me? When you go to work, you try to get a raise or whatever, you better start doing that mind control shit. You better understand what the fuck love is. Make them motherfuckers love you. 48 laws of power. Always, 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 always have something that you're doing that ain't nobody else doing. Or have something that you're doing that they value so that they keep you around. Always. You feel me? You know how like hackers and shit. Some motherfuckers don't get locked up. They put them on the team. Anyways. Do, 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 do. Can we move forward? The only way for a victim to get free of the vampire is through an effort of the will aimed at emotional and psychological independence is through an effort of the will and the will is that person you can't save no nigga period well i mean you might can talk them into it if that's you know 
what it takes. But, uh, you know what, I ain't gonna get into all that. Maybe I shouldn't say you can't save a nigga because you might can talk him into wanting to do something for this stuff. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna try to be completely negative about this shit. I don't really give a fuck if you're trying to save him or not. I'm just trying to be fair about this shit. How about that? But anyway, that's the only way. They got to want to get better. Just like anything else in life. You got to want it. And how bad do you want it? When it starts getting like that, then you start to break yourself away. When you don't give a fuck. And this is when most people hit that point where they just don't care. They didn't have enough. They've been drained. And it's it. They have to break away from the motherfucking emotional vampires. The way I put it is, you know, there's gold diggers, right? And gold diggers want your money. But... You got to be on your shit to even attract gold diggers. You have to have already been taking care of yourself and showing a lot of love to yourself for gold diggers to even come around. They see how much love you have for yourself and they know that you automatically have enough love to show them. They know you do. So that constitutes a gold digger. Well, maybe not constitutes a gold digger, but you get my point versus... The other women that know you got potential or whatever you got. You ain't dead so they can eat off you and eat off you and eat off you and eat off you. Especially if you depend on them. This is why it's over for most niggas, most men that move in with women. It's over. Because then now your chips is in with them. You depend on them for the very roof over your head. So you, most men, will... Turn into chumps and allow them bitches to run all over them. Tell them whatever, do whatever, all that shit. That's why a lot of women don't want to deal with niggas that live with their baby mama. And or whatever, you bitch ass niggas. Because they know that woman really got control of you, man. You ain't done. You ain't gonna do whatever. You gonna do whatever that bitch say to not lose that roof over your head. They already know the game. They vampires. So they know how the vampires work. Period. And you better be a motherfucking vampire. So you know how the motherfucking vampires work. Why the fuck you think I got this mask on, man? Because I'm with the shits. So if you come at me, if they want to know something about me, nigga, I'm with it. I know what's up. Any of them spirits, them dark ass niggas, whatever else. If you show yourself to me, I already know all this shit. This, this, this. If you show yourself to me, if it comes to me, man, I'm going to absorb that shit. I guarantee your imagination ain't as motherfucking wild as mine. So any shit that you can create, I bet you I can create some shit more wilder and bolder than that shit. In a heartbeat. Anyways, I digress. Point is, you get the point, man. Don't be afraid of shit. Showing you how. You see me right now. Fuck a vampire. Fuck all of them motherfucking chapters of corrupt love. Period. <coughs> You know what? And look, all this shit, I'm going to skip here and come back to because I'm going to try to cut through it. And I'm going to leave some shit for your imagination if you do get the book. Understand, there's a lot of shit I'm not even saying or touching on. This is why I stopped going down the table of contents as well, man. I ain't going to give it all to you. Fuck that. Get the goddamn book. It's good as shit. It might only be like 20 goddamn dollars, man. I don't know if you can see that shit. But on the back of the book, it don't tell me nothing on the back of the book. But I already know. I bought it. It's only like $20. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, here it goes. On the back of the book, it says philosophy and hermetic hermetic philosophy. Yeah, psychology. My bad. Psychology and hermetic philosophy. Hell of a book if you just want to kind of see what's up. And I mean, it does kind of give you instructions, but man, just the way they break it down, it's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> loneliness and anxiety. Now, this is another one of them things. I guess I should have brought up the whole Oedipus complex and the Diana complex. Um, Oedipus and Electra, obviously these are people who, you know, the mama's boys and the daddy's little girls. Oedipus ended up sleeping with his mom, having kids with his mom and all that shit, if you know anything about the story. He didn't know he was doing it, but then later on he found out that's what's happening. And he scratched his, I think the, the mother, when she found out that was really a son, she scratched all her eyes out and he might have killed herself. Something happened like that. Or maybe he scratched his eyes out and the mom killed herself. Something like that. It's a hell of a story. It's in the Odyssey. Homer, I believe, the Odyssey. Anyway, point is, yeah, or, or yeah, the Odyssey. It's about Oedipus. There you go. Boom. So, uh, point being, I didn't read that shit until I got to college. Some niggas had that shit in high school. Point being, there are a lot, some people out here who have that fixation on their mother or their father. You know what I'm saying? For men, it's Oedipus. For women, it's called the Electric Complex. You know what I'm saying? And women... And these are, are uh, women who end up battling with their mom or whatever over their dad. You know what I mean? And, of course, this is men who basically 
uh, come to butt heads and shit with their fathers or whatever over their mom. And that's the real thing. And it starts as kids and whatever else. And you grow up or whatever, you know, they have these complexes. So when they deal with other relationships, you know, obviously, they're looking for their mother, a mother figure in a lover. They're looking for a father figure in a lover. So anyways, those are some other chapters that's up through her. Um, Diana Complex is out the women who feel like men uh, growing up. They either had a big brother that was always loved, that he got more trophies, etc., or whatever. Or they had a big cousin or they didn't have men, period. So point is, they always looked at them at themselves like they were inferior. As a kid, they looked at women that looked at themselves like they were inferior to men. So as they grew up, they always tried to do manly things. It's also uh, men who raise their daughters to be all tough and hard and whatever else because the man praises when a daughter does manly things then she tends to take on that whole manly role and then when she gets older it's more or less about being a man it's not like like mainly the feminist movement it's not necessarily about praising women that do feminine things and whatnot it's more or less like them showing that they can survive in a man's world they can do everything a man can do but you're a woman, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with you being able to do everything a man can do, but a man can't do everything a woman can do. But at the same rate, you see there's a lot of this old gay shit. Now, I'm not saying anything's wrong with the gay shit. I'm just not fucking gay. Not my problem. But that's why you see a lot of the gay shit. There are a lot of men out there proving that they can do the same shit that women do. So, whatever. Anyways, point is, loneliness and anxiety. I had a lot of shit tagged here that... You know, I'm trying not to read no whole lot because you got to get the own book. Love cannot be an improvisation, a saving grace, a habit, or a hook onto which hang illusions. Love must be above all these things. One must establish some order of priority and motivation, and one must understand that one cannot seek love to solve problems. You don't have a problem, then fall in love. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or go through shit. That whole make up to break up obviously ain't motherfucking love. You feel me? We shouldn't have to go through some old bullshit for you to start loving me. We shouldn't have to argue all the time for you to show me some love. Or for you to come around to loving me. That's bullshit. So, that's loneliness and anxiety. Uh, da, 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 da. It will only becomes a means of manipulating the other person to derive pleasure for oneself. Again, this is why I brought up them shadow forms that we make for ourselves, like loneliness and anxiety. You really don't want to be lonely. You want somebody to talk to, even if they hate your guts. You glad you got somebody in the room. Again, that whole physical presence shit. That person's magnetic vibe which again vampires you might be feeding off a nigga and, and don't know you need to be feeding off somebody else but because you receiving such good vibes subtle energy shit that you don't really know point is it's just this person's aura that your aura is feeding off of and you don't know why you still in this situation and they beating your ass or they whatever you know what I'm saying? Or this woman, you you paying all her bills and you doing this and you doing that. Why you can't just, it's something about it and you don't know what it is. There you go. Because you a fucking vampire and you didn't know it. You eating off their energy. You eating off their presence. You eating off their mind. You eating off them their thoughts. How they feel about you. Well, he makes me feel like it. Well, he only, who gives a fuck? Well, I mean, she cold, bro. I was told with the baddest bitches come the baddest problems. That should tell you something, dog. That should tell you something. Anyway, there are two different types of solitude. A natural one, where as you see, nigga, ain't nobody around. There's nobody here. And a neurotic one, where there are people everywhere, and you're like, nobody knows me. I don't know anybody. Oh, my God. I'm, you know, nigga, that's crazy. You're crazy. That's where anxiety comes from and whatever else. You know what I'm saying? The ego wants what it wants. But loneliness and anxiety. You know, you're not motivated by love, but by the hope of finding a person with whom love can be developed. That's, I kind of mentioned that earlier in the conversation as well. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucking beard, brother. Fix the fucking beard, goddammit. The beard. <laughs> 
but by the hope of finding a love with whom can be better. Ah. However, the individual does not envision a relationship from the point of view of what love means, but from the personal advantage to be gained from love. So you see what I'm saying? Is there anything else I really want to, want to know about it? I think I'm going to put it close this motherfucker. It's been about 45 minutes. Let me stop right here. Ooh, corrupt love is hysteria. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and touch that real quick. The corrupt love is hysteria. That's actually the last one on corrupt love. I'm going to have to do a part two because this is long as shit. So, corrupt love is hysteria. And that's basically, these are the niggas that are throwing shit. They, this is where the whole childish thing comes in. That's hysteria. That's going crazy. You flip out, call you names, cuss you out, all this. They ain't trying to hear nothing else. The conversation is over, like Kevin Hart said. When the motherfuckers start doing like this, all that type of shit. You know what I mean? It's game over. When the motherfuckers flip out and start throwing shit at you, call you all type of bitch ass niggas, uh, uh, ugly ass bitches, dirty ass hoe, all this shit, whack ass bitch. Whatever, lame, whatever the fuck they can come up with, right? Uh, when all that type of shit goes on and the motherfuckers start flipping out and whatever else, they got some shit going on. But it's obvious that ain't love. But what it stems from, they talk about it in this book. Hysteria in general stems from incest. So yeah, somebody who ain't got their shit together. If they get mad and they flip out and it's like, oh, babe, I don't know what came over me. Basically, what happens is, again, we are talking about love. What happens is as a child, the man or the woman, the male or the female, the boy or the girl, as a child, had a fear of an adult of the opposite sex, maybe even same sex, but an adult touching them in their private areas, or just in general, approaching that whole concept of sex, and they wasn't ready for it. So what happens is they try to suppress that whole sexual side. They don't want to be seen as ready for it. So they push it down, and they, they you know what I mean? But instead of it, so basically, that same energy that's never destroyed, only transferred, but that same energy that one takes when you get horny, that same passion that's built up and whatever else, since a kid, they've been pushing that down, pushing that down. No, I'm not safe. No, they don't think they're cute. They whatever. They've been hiding that shit and been trying to run from it since a kid. So basically, now that they're adults and, you know, they're, they're into it or they're actually having sex now or whatever, that whole passion, these people are not really freaks in the bedroom. When they do it, they all... <laughs> Take this dick, nigga. Get this dick, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when them bitches trip out like that, or them niggas is on some weirdo shits, I mean, I'd have been like, damn, bitch. Well, okay, let, let, let me know when you done. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't saying I've been afraid like that, but I'm like, what? Okay, I mean, you, you want it like that? All right. Rah, bitch, I'm going to throw this dick. Whatever, you know what I mean? But it'd be like, damn, what the fuck's going on? Point is, all that passion and whatnot is brought up into the heart. That's still emotion. But instead of it being in the sexual region, that emotion goes to the other side. In the heart. So that horn instead of them getting horny, they get angry. They get upset. That whatever they might want to do. They maybe get overly excited. Some of them cry. I don't know why I'm crying. Or they just cry a lot during movies. Shit like that or whatever. But all that passion is now pushed into the heart. So all that raw energy and whatever else, you know what I'm saying, is now in the emotional arena. So it don't take much for them to flip out. You can't tell them shit. That's hysteria. You can't make them mad. You can't tell them shit. You can't piss them off. They'll go crazy. And that ain't love. So, anywho, um, The Science of Love by John Baines, man. That was my wizard, wizardly motherfucking review of it. If you like that shit, man, like, share, and subscribe. Again, for those few, I love y'all, man. Thanks for, you know what I'm saying, following and subscribing me, dog. Holler at me in the comments, man. We'll rap about whatever. We can do part twos and threes and fours. Whatever, you feel me? I'm trying to get back in. I, I, you know, like I said, man, I got some thick-ass books. The Secret Teachings of Ages is sitting right here, man. And it's huge. If I can pull it out without a bunch of shit falling. But, man, it's hard to get through some of these books. Because they talk about a lot of shit. And, you know, I'm a normal nigga, man. That's all it is. I'm a normal nigga, you know. I just... 
investigate. And I took a trip to the dark side and I ain't came back since. So now I'm helping other niggas do the same shit. But you feel me? Big thick ass book, dog. And there's oh so much. Oh, I lost my bookmark. Don't even matter, man. So much motherfucking information. The secret teachings of all ages. Oh my god. So much shit. What is that? So much shit. See what I'm saying? Come on, man. So, yeah, it's been a few weeks. I apologize sincerely from those who might have been waiting to hear from me again. Other than that, thank you. Like, share, subscribe. OZ the Wizard. Your field guide to the dark side. Yeah, nigga.